continuing my travels from Montana, we rented a car and drove to Seattle. Before we got to Seattle, we stopped in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho and Spokane. And these are my vinyl finds from those cities. first place we got to in Coeur d'Alene was the only record store we found in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, and it's called The Long Ear. It was a good record store. It had a good collectible section. Right when you walked in, you looked left, and they had a couple bins of all their high-end collectible. That's usually what I look for right off the bat. I asked them if they had any more collectibles, and they said that was it. They had a big selection of records throughout the store, but they were more cheaper, poor quality records. They had lots of CDs and lots of new releases for the young kids. The guys at the counter were very helpful. And especially when they realized that I was spending some money, they helped me out a lot and pulled out some other great things. First record they showed me was this. Nirvana, never mind. This is the 2009 ORG reissue. I have the European first pressing and I have the US first pressing. But this one is the one that's supposed to sound the best, at least of the reissues. So I'm kind of glad that I found this. First time I saw Nirvana was November, May 1989 at my community college, Green River Community College. And I was in the back, it was in the gym, Lindbergh Auditorium. I was in the back. You really couldn't understand Kurt's words at all. And at that time, I liked Soundgarden better. But it still was neat because they were big, even at that time, locally, they were the hot band. So Nirvana, never mind. The next album I pulled from the bin is the 1991 Pearl Jam 10 album. I do not have the first issue. I never come across it in LA at all. This is a really good album. Back in 91, I collected the live cassettes from 1990 and 91, their live shows when I was tape collector at the time. This is a really good album. It's got uh, your sleeve. This band was remnants of Mother Love Bone. Mother Love Bone still to this day is my favorite Seattle band. Andy Wood, rest in peace. He was a great front man. I, I still need a US Mother Love Bone app. All I have the European and I have the Brazilian, but I don't have the US of app. I only bought the two records and Coeur d'Alene, and then we drove on to Spokane. They told me to go to Entropy Records. They said it was a well-curated store and they would have some of the psych that I was looking for. The guy at the counter was really nice. They had a decent psych section. Their new releases were mixed in with the used records, so it made digging a lot longer. I don't like that. I like when they have a specific used section and a new, but not when they combine them. So flipping through the records, this is a blind buy. This is Salem Mass Witch Burning. This is a 2021 Jack Font Records. It's US psych rock. It's known for dark, their haunting style, similar to Black Sabbath and Coven. The basis from this band went on to play with blues artist John Mayo, but I know nothing about these guys. Witch Burning. The next album I grabbed was The Pink Fairies. I've been meaning to pick these up. This is U.S. First Pressing on Polydor. It's U.K. Hard Rock Punk. They're the hard rock with, with a punk edge. Free track, City Kids. Guitarist Larry Willis would later go on to join Motorhead. And the members were previously in the band The Deviants. I've done a few videos on The Deviants. And you can check those videos out. Pink Fairies, Never Never Land. This is the 1971 UK original pressing, first pressing. Actually, UK is psychedelic rock, known for heavy guitar riffs, psychedelic sound. Members were previously in the Deviants, and Twink was also a member of the Pretty Things, and Tomorrow is on the Polydor Red Label. And another one I found was the other half, Mr. Pharmacist. This is on the Eva Records. This is a 1982 French reissue. Now, this one 
Ava Records, they were subsidized by the French government. By they issued a series of records. I have Chocolate Watch Band, 13 Floor Elevators. They were unauthorized and they're mastered from original pressings of the records. Ava Records helped kickstart the 60s band Garage Revival of the 80s. This is garage rock, psychedelic rock, known for the song Mr. Pharmacist, that famously covered by The Fall. The album features guitarist Randy Holden, who would eventually go on to be in Blue Cheer. The other half, Mr. Pharmacist. Hey, the label. Other half. This is our Atco, 1968, U.S. Psychedelic Rock. This is their original album. Again, this is Psych Rock with Blues Influences. This Jeff Nolan was previously in the band Sons of Adam, who are famous for covering Arthur Lee's penned Feathered Fish, the other half. After digging around for a while, the last record that I found at Entropy was a great one. It is Dead Moon Stranded in the Mystery Zone. This is 1991, sealed, never opened, on Tombstone. I have the reissue on Mississippi, which is doing all the reissues of this, but this is an original 1991. That would be like the first time I saw the color box in Seattle. I remember, I remember thinking these, these people are old. The opening band was young. I think I knew the opening band. But it was great. I saw them four or five times after that and became a big fan of Dead Moon. And that's right when this album came out in 1991. Dead Moon. And then Resurrection Records was the next one that I went to. I didn't have much time. They were all closing. Everything seems to close at 6 in Spokane. Uh, it was a well-organized store with a lot of genres. It focused on punk. The owner, I think he was, was very nice. He looked like a former punk rocker, current punk rocker, I think his name was Mike, really nice. And it was very knowledgeable. And I just kind of went in and went through the punk section and just said I was looking for some psych and he kind of pointed me in the right direction. And then I kind of thumbed through the psych section, didn't see anything I really wanted. And then by the time I finished that, he had pulled out a few records, and thought that I might like them. And so these are those records. December's Children. This is a 1970 U.S. original pressing on Mainstream. I love the Mainstream label. It has so many good, interesting albums. This is U.S. Psych. They're, they've got a melodic, psychedelic rock sound. They're similar to Jefferson Airplane and the Birds. The guitarist Bill Rhodes was previously in the band The Fenwicks. Other than that, I don't know much about them. This is on my list. I've heard a song and I thought it was good so I'm looking forward to going home and playing this one and actually I recently got the reissue I think a jackpot reissue but I haven't played it yet but now I have the original so I'll be selling that reissue on mainstream okay and another one that he had in the stack was rebirth the children this is 1968 on atco the US Psychedelic Rock. It's a blind buy. I've never heard of this. Um, I guess they're like the Strawberry Alarm Clock or the Chocolate Watch Band. The Still in the Shrink, Rebirth, the Children, Blind Buy, on that code, I'm assuming what a yellow label. Yep. Another one he had was Giant Crab Cool It Helios. This is a 1969 original on Uni, which it probably has that. Yeah, it's got that famous Uni label. It's a blind buy. I don't know anything about it. I guess it's psychedelic and soul with punk influences. Um, they say the similar art line, the Family Stone and Iron Butterfly. Should be interesting. Blind buy. Cool it, Julio's Giant Crab. I'm assuming the band name is Giant Crab and the album's called Cool it, Julio's. First got into the store, I asked the owner if he had any Dead Moon, and he immediately brought me and asked if I heard about King B, which I've never heard of King B. I guess it just recently came out. This is a recordings of Fred Cole's band from 1977 and 1978. And Fred Cole was the founding member of 
Dead Moon, and also um, the Lollipop Shop, and then Weeds and Rats after this album. But this is cassette recordings with the vinyl. This came out, I think, a couple of years ago. I never heard of it. I'm looking forward to digging into this because I like everything that cool. And he also, he gave me this record, Boy Wonders Love, which was Andrew Loomis's band before Dead Moon. He was the drummer of Dead Moon, who has since passed away. I know nothing about it, but this came out. This was reissued in 2017, and he was the drummer of Dead Moon. This should be interesting. As I was digging through the metal section, I came across Queen's Reich, Rage for Order. This is the 1986 album. And this one is sealed with the hype sticker and it's promo stand. I love Queen's Reich, but I, I'm more into their 1982 EP on 206 Records that later went to EMI. Their first EP. I, I first heard that in your high. And that is my favorite era. That and the album, The Warning. This came out after that. I don't like it as much, but again, it's sealed and it's a promo and it'll be good for the collection. Queen Drake, Rage for Order. The last thing I got from Resurrection Records was on the wall and it is Gitz Second Skin. It is their um, 1991, it's an original seven inch. This is Mia Zapata. She was killed tragically in like 1993. I never saw them live and I didn't really know much about them. I do need their albums and I need that their first single, which is the one before this, and there was one after this. Gets second skin. That is my finds for Idaho and in Spokane. I'm already in Seattle. I already picked up a bunch of Seattle records. That video is coming. Like and subscribe, and I will see you on the next one.